What up, movie lovers? Welcome back to the MTD Movie News Show. I'm Jacob Bartley, your host, and I'm back again with Gio Ramos. What's going on, man? Doing good. Hope you all having a good Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, yeah, and joining us as normal is Jake Berlin. What's up, guys? Glad to be back. This is brought to you by MovieTalkExpress.com, and for those of you who don't know, this is the, the movie show podcast where we discuss the biggest movie news stories throughout the week, and the way it works is... Gio's going to run down uh, some of the biggest movie news stories that he picked out. He is the movie news guru. So, Gio, what do we got first? Well, we're going to start this one off with the obvious. Marvel Studios has announced a sequel for Ant-Man titled Ant-Man and the Wasp. And that film is scheduled to yeah. come out um, July of 2018. It's taken the place of Black Panther, which is which they have also announced moved up to February of uh, 2018. Also, they they uh, pushed back Captain Marvel to March of 2019. So Marvel has once again re-adjusted uh, their Phase 3 slate of films. They threw in Ant-Man and the Wasp. They pushed Black Panther forward, and they pushed Captain Marvel back. So I'm going to ask you guys... Are you excited about this? And tell me your thoughts about this title, Ant-Man and the Wasp. We'll start with uh, Jacob. I am not excited about this at all. Surprise, surprise. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so Ant-Man is my favorite movie of 2015 thus far. I, I love that movie. I saw it four times in theaters. That's, wow, that's a I statement. love it. I, I've said that from the beginning. I, I, I love that movie. So obviously... This news freaking got me so excited. I and I love the title. I was telling Gio yesterday. Yeah, it sounds a little hokey. It sounds a little cheesy, but I think it's a play on on that. There, because it's Ant Man. It's a comedic. Ant Man is a joke in the first place. You know that the name it sounds like a joke. So they're playing again off of that Ant Man and the Wasp. Like they're like it's a weekly TV show or something. I I like it and. Just as far as the sequel in general, I'm so glad. I'm wondering why they took so long to announce a sequel, but I'm sure they had to figure out where it was going to fit in because as far as their slate was, as far as we knew, it wasn't in there yet, you know, and there wasn't any really any room. So did they add another slot or did they yes. just move everything? They they added, they just threw Ant-Man right in there and they, And then pushed everything a yeah, little bit forward and back. One okay. Foot back, one forward. So, and I don't even mind them moving Black Panther or Captain Marvel because it's a matter of a month. It's not like Captain Marvel's getting pushed a year back or six months back. It's, right. What is it? Five, four or uh, five months? It's actually... It's yeah, from it's, November to March. Yeah. So it's so, five, five And months, then yeah. we're getting Black Panther sooner. So, you know, that kind of makes up for one another. Um, right, right. Yeah, dude. I, and one of the reasons why I enjoyed Ant-Man so much is because of Evangeline Lilly and her character Hope Van Dyne, who we all know, seeing the end of that film, is going to become the new Wasp. Spoiler. The, taking over for her mother. And her being such a highlight in that film she's gonna be a big part of this sequel and the ant-man character and the mcu going forward so nothing but good news for me all right jake what about you the 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 news is awesome um it's kind of i mean if you've seen ant-man uh it's almost expected it's kind of and knowing someone or knowing the comics like i do uh this is what it's been leading towards marvel just needed to make sure that people wanted ant-man and that it would be successful. Um, and after seeing it, man, I mean, you know, kind of going into it, man, as well, uh, I knew that the sequel would be a huge part where it wouldn't go without Wasp. Because in the comics, Ant-Man, you, you can't have Ant-Man without Wasp. Oh, isn't that the title of their comic, Ant-Man and the Wasp? Well, there's been multiple. Right yeah. now, it's just Ant-Man. But, but there at, have at been, a there point have in been, time, there yeah, was one, right? Okay. There have been titles with that. Uh, but and the, it, so it just makes sense. It makes complete sense. And um, the Wasp is actually a, f a favorite character of mine, although it's Janet Van Dyne, her mom in the comics. Um, I love what Evangeline D Lily did in the movie. Um, I think her and Paul Rudd had awesome chemistry together. Uh, they were a lot of fun and it really built towards something the entire movie. So I'm excited to see where it goes. And um, having her in the title, not only solidifies like, look, this is going to be her movie too, 
But now she's a major player in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She's a huge player, and she's going to be for a long time. Deservingly I, so. I, I have think. a feeling that she's going to be around for uh, somewhere around a decade. Well, like a long in, time. The original Avengers team was Ant Man, Wasp. She was supposed to be in the original Hulk, Avengers. Thor, yeah. Iron Man. So, so yeah, I mean, if she can play that role that she plays in the comics, in the cartoons, as a like a found not a founder, but like one of the core members of the Avengers, I think it'll be awesome. Well, it's going to be different though because she is the daughter. And, yeah, definitely. Um, but she's she's quick witted. Like yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. She's kind of like her mom is. Well, in she the already knows the suit and everything. Exactly. And, um, but I'm just excited to see those two kind of uh, tag team with each other, and what kind of like um, enemy they kind of they go up against, I guess, mm-hmm. and how it leads into. That's interesting. Um, well, now the question becomes like, is she in Infinity War? Like, is I that where so. it leads I think, with her? I think she's, yeah, definitely. Or do we possibly see her show up as Hope Van Dyne and not the Wasp in Civil War? Like, is there a small cameo with just her? Is she not confirmed for mm-hmm. Civil War? She's not. Are you sure? So. Maybe yeah, she I don't shows up she as is. just the human, like the non superhero form, but not the wasp, and then maybe it leads into Infinity War. But it's awesome news. It all, it's awesome news for Marvel because now female roles are becoming much more prominent. Definitely. And uh, the wasp is a huge fan favorite between uh, Marvel fans, and um, it's very exciting. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. Great, and for me, I I like the news. Uh, the sequel uh, being announced is no surprise. Um, I'm a little surprised that they didn't announce it initially when they they announced uh, Phase Three. But then again, I don't think they realize that Ant Man would be the hit that it ended oh, yeah. up being. No way. Um, as far as the title goes, I have two theories about that. Two feel- different um, things I have to say. First, um, for me, it kind of sounded like a gimmick, you know, because hear me out all right so uh it this this summer ant-man went up against no movies right it was a comic book genre right it was pretty much yeah there was only it. three comic book movies this year yeah um yeah. but then i look at 2018 the flash aquaman uh and a marvel a fox marvel which i'm assuming i, I, I think, think it's, it's new a, mutants it's either New Mutants or the X Men Fantastic Four crossover. And doesn't Justice League Part Two come out that year? Twenty eighteen? I don't think. Oh, maybe don't, not. No, you're right. You're maybe right. Not. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you're right. But Ant Man has a lot of competition now, um, in in that summer. So mm-hmm. I think they're making Ant Man the sequel stand out by putting Ant Man and the Wasp, trying to sell it as more. Secondly, I think uh, this is Marvel making up for uh, not giving the Wasp much to do besides folding her arms and hmm. being against, you know, Paul Rudd the entire time. I mean, rightfully so. It's Ant-Man's story, you know. Um, I get why they're doing that, but it kind of feels like they're making up. Like, hey, we're going to do this now. We're going to give more focus to this important character in the comics. I think they um, planned this, though. I think they wanted to introduce her in Ant-Man, but not, you know, have her in the forefront and then expand on her character in sequels. I think it was a plan. I don't think they changed their plan due to. I stuff mean, from yeah. The movie, I mean, you know? I, I I have nothing against how how it went out. I just I mean that's just my no. I theory. get what you're saying yeah. though. Um, and this once again shows that Marvel's has a contingency plan for everything. You know, they're able to throw movies in if they have a story that fits. You know, and they're allowed and to do that. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And a quick question: Is this now the most exciting movie out of Phase Three for you guys? That's not a team up film. Oh, or, that's a good um, question. Not even close. So what is what's coming in Phase Three? Black Panther. You have uh, Black Panther. Oh, you have Spider Man. You have Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I guess we can count yeah. Captain America: Civil War. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm so looking forward to Ant Man and the Wasp. Like and then, so much. And but then the Inhumans and. I gotta say that Doctor Spider-Man Strange. movie, man. I I gotta say the Spider-Man movie. Okay. What about you, Jake? Um, it's I'm just like him. I'm I'm very excited about it. Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think it's gonna be a great film, uh, especially after how Ant-Man was successful. But for me, it's Captain Marvel, um, and Black Panther. But Captain Marvel is a character that I've been wanting to see for a very, very, very long time. Um, as well as Black Panther, but um. Yeah, it's just that Marvel's like starting to expand on um, much much more variety of characters, 
And uh, although I love what Ant-Man did, and I'm very excited to see the Wasp team up with him, it's Captain Marvel and Black Panther just because they're, so, they're such a different style of character from what we know with Marvel so far. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, just a quick uh, FYI, guys. Marvel has also planted three future release dates, uh, May 1st, 2020, July 10th, 2020, and November 6th, 2020. All films have been all uh, three release dates have unannounced films. I mean, all we could do is speculate on what those films could be. Who knows? Maybe one could be a Hulk movie. One could be a Spider-Man sequel. Um, Can I say what they are right now? Can I just take a guess? Go ahead. A new Captain America, wow, Spider-Man right? sequel, and Guardians of the Galaxy three. Wow. A new Captain Cap America four with a uh, no it'll, new Captain America with Winter Soldier. Wow. wow that's a big statement that's a i don't cool. think that's come i like that after chris evans said he'll play captain america for as long he's as he's gonna want him to. after infinity war he'll leave as captain america go into hiding because of all the stuff that's gone down okay he won't die. and, and then, then he'll, he'll eventually come just back as the comics just as the comics he'll take a break bucky will take over for a movie or two however long and then chris evans will come back eventually it'll be like a like a two three year hiatus and then he'll be back okay Wow. Maybe. I All right. Well, you guys in the comments, let us know what do you think these uh, three unannounced Marvel films are. Give us your guess. We'd love to hear it. All right. Moving on, we have an announcement for a pretty big film that I'm sure we are all looking forward to because this film has nowhere else. This franchise has nowhere else to go but up, right? Um, F. Gary Gray has been announced to, that he will direct Fast and Furious 8. Um, for a while, it was speculated that this project had trouble finding its director after James Wan and Justin Lin both uh, turned down the opportunity to direct Fast and Furious 8. But we now know that three films are coming, 8, 9, and 10. And F. Gary Gray, after his Straight Outta Compton uh, hit this past summer, will now take over and direct Fast and Furious 8. F. Gary Gray has previously worked with Vin Diesel on the film A Man Apart, which I have not seen, but now I absolutely want to just to get a, you know, a idea of their chemistry. But F. Gary Gray has also done films like uh, Be Cool. Friday. Which, um, Friday. Um, the Italian Job with um, oh, yeah, true. Mark Wahlberg and Charlie Theron. So, um, and Law Abiding Citizen with uh, Gerard Butler. So, I'll start with you, uh, Jake. F. Gary Gray, do you like this um, pairing? Do you think he can bring anything more to the franchise? And what do you think he's going to go with Fast and Furious 8? Where should they go? Space. <laughs> Makes I'm sense. Just I'm just kidding. Um, no, I mean, it's it's a good fit. I mean, obviously, after sure that Compton, the guy can do whatever the hell he wants. The doors are opening left and right for him. Um, but personally... I didn't want to see him take this job. Uh, I, it's nothing against the Fast and Furious franchise, but um, and they've been so successful in, in action and you know character-wise and fans. But um, it's almost like a throwaway for what he could have done next. Um, I mean, there was the Black Panther option, obviously with Marvel, mm -hmm. and who says he still can't do that? But um, I felt like he could have taken a, a much bigger step as a director instead of doing just a an eighth sequel for a Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it works. It's cool. I'm very excited to see what he does. Uh, but I, I wish he would have taken a different kind of uh, road towards a better a better option for a movie. I guess you could say something that he could have really put his creative juices into instead of um, trying to build something uh, that's already been built for seven movies. Plus, there's kind of a bit of me that would have really loved to see Rob Cohen come back like they were talking about mm -hmm. and go to a much more street racing style movie. Um, maybe that has to do with it, but, you know, it's a good fit. It's, I mean, it's going to be a good movie because the guy can direct the hell out of movies. Um, now it just depends if uh, Vin Diesel lets him do that or not. So. so, in your opinion, he's, you would say he's a little overqualified for an eighth yeah, uh, yeah, film? Yeah, I would say so. Because, okay. I mean... Like you said, I mean, where else can they really go? Like, I want to see more That's, movies, yeah. but I thought Fast and Furious 7 was such a great ending. Like, why not just end it there? Like, I know you want to make more money and whatnot, but um, <laughs> I just felt like Fear 7 was a great way to end the, the series. 
Um, and now they're talking about doing another trilogy. It's like, okay, you might be giving us too much already, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, overqualified, I guess it may be too harsh of a word, but he, I think he may be too overqualified, especially after doing something like Straight Outta Compton and being so successful at it. So, oh, Jacob? I, so wait, let me ask you one thing. Uh, has Universal came out and said that he's directing Fast and Furious 8? Yes. And they, even, they did? And even Vin Diesel. And well, F. Gary Gray confirmed it too. They confirmed it for yeah, sure because all I heard was that Vin Diesel posted that picture. No, it yeah. came out yesterday. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. I didn't so, get a chance to update it. Sorry, right, guys. Um, no, so it's cool. Um, I think this is a good fit actually. And I'll tell you why he's not doing something more creative. Money, 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 money. But imagine you know how much what they're. The- I guarantee you the check for Fast Furious 8 is bigger than the check for Black Panther. You know what I Why wouldn't you want to, like, especially after the separation with Marvel now, the whole creative team? Yeah. You know how many creative juices you could have gone with with Black Panther? That's true, to but I can answer a Fast that. And Dude, Furious movie? Money. It, yeah, Dollar it, signs, it baby. Matter. Like, if. Dude, I I'm telling you, people. he's getting paid millions. I hate greedy people. <laughs> That's Hollywood. Hey, but he has to take care of himself, man. He probably. Like he hasn't had a big, huge tentpole film, the tentpole film that's gonna pay him millions of dollars. Maybe he just does this to get Straight himself Compton good. Straight made a buttload of money. I, I guarantee it did, but he doesn't get money on the back end of that. He got paid for to do the job in the first place. So I just think he wants to take care of his family for decades and generations to come. And then after he does this movie, it'll allow him to do something a lot more creative. So and going back to. I w- First of all, if they're going to go back to street racing, I would have loved to see Cohen come back from the original director of the first film. Um, but I feel like if they are going to go back to this street racing uh, f- type of uh, tone, I think F. Gary Gray would be perfect for it. Yeah, you all have uh, great points. Um, to answer some of your questions, uh, Black Panther has yet to uh, find – well, it, they just found their writer. I mean, they don't have a script yet. They have Chadwick Boseman, so that film, even though it's pushed up four months, it's still a ways off for Fast and Furious. You have Chris Morgan, who has been. I really wish Ava DuVernay was directing Black Panther. You can't tell me though that Marvel doesn't have a script for a Black Panther movie. Oh, I do. I think they have an outline, but I don't yeah, think they. So I, don't, like, I don't think they. I mean, for me, like I, I said, I said it before. Like I think he can do both, but it'll be very challenging. Like going. Oh yeah, that would be tough. But Furious Eight. I mean, for me, it feels like it won't be as lengthy of a production production as Furious Seven was. Well, they took a break, or as as uh, difficult as it was. Um, I think Furious Eight has deserved, has earned the right to continue going with their franchise. I mean, they've done nothing to make us. Yeah, and of course they're going to make more, dude. It's the oh, I'm with you on that, but I think it was it was should I I just think story wise it wrapped up perfectly at the end. But dude, it's the third highest grossing film of all time, or fourth? What is it? Uh, third now. Yeah, so you can't. It's money. It's all about the money. I mean, the same thing can be said about the Bourne franchise. But look at Jason Bourne's coming back. Uh, I'd much rather see Jason Bourne. Well, Same could be said about the Toy Story franchise <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, I'd much rather that. see Toy Story than Fast Furious. <laughs> and yeah, I mean F. Gary Gray. You know, I think about those concert scenes that he did and that atmosphere and what he'll put to. I think he can create that street race racing vibe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I mean, I'm interested to see where it goes. And uh, if anything, he's very qualified for this. So let's see what he brings. And hey, and who knows? Maybe he loves cars. Maybe he loves the Fast and Furious franchise. Did you ever consider that? And maybe he's like, yes, I get to direct a Fast and Furious movie. Like, maybe he's excited about it. And I'm maybe just, it's only I'm one just, film. I'm just being selfish because I wanted to see something do him No, that's that true. Isn't a cash grabber. Yeah. Well, that is, you know, he did straight out of Compton and now he's going to do this. And maybe after that, he'll go back to something smaller. We'll see. And you made a good point. Universally reportedly offered life altering money to James Wan to get him to come back. For oh, Furious wow. 8, really? He, he said, nah, I'm doing Conjuring. Y'all can, you know. Oh, Conjuring 2? I hate yeah. greedy people. And he's doing, <laughs> and he's doing um, Aquaman. Aquaman, right? Yeah. Yep. So people. you guys let us know what you think. Uh, F. Gary Gray, is he a good fit for Furious 8? And. 
where will they go let us know give us your space. pitch yeah maybe space <laughs> we'll see all right moving on we have an update for a dc film uh relatively unknown but seth graham smith will write and direct the flash movie for dc um now there was a time where phil lord and chris miller were rumored to be directing the flash but then the star wars movie i thought it was just writing was it yeah they were they were supposed to write it but it they were gonna it was rumored that they were gonna direct it it was implied yeah uh of course i'm reading from the hollywood reporter right now so i mean whatever they say they're always right sometimes (laughs) true that (laughs) So, uh, yeah, Seth Graham Smith will direct The Flash, um, and I'm not seeing any, like, big stuff from his IMDb. Uh, Were the Millers, right, is one of them? Well, he did Abraham Lincoln Vampire well, he, he Hunter. He hasn't directed anything, a real movie. Oh, is he author? He, he's, a, he, he's, he's, a author. he's a writer. He's an author. He's an author. He's an author. Well, he's right. and a screenplay. He so he wrote. I think he wrote like the books, a couple of these books, and he's, then then he writes the screenplay. So for books, uh, Abraham Lincoln, The Vampire Hunter, and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and, zombies. and he's doing both screenplays too. And he did the uh, screen. But he did something horrible. What did he do? He's writing. He's other than <laughs> Vampire Slayer. Oh, I don't. Uh, it's not saying, but he's writing the the Lego Batman film. Oh also. yeah, true. So putting all this into consideration, um, is WB doing the right thing by going for these sort of relatively new uh, writers slash first time director, or should they be going the other route and going for established directors, given how early they are and their cinematic universe i'm gonna ask you first uh jacob because you love the flash show and what is a guy like this um how much excitement does this bring to uh the flash movie um here's the thing i wanted phil lord and chris miller to be involved i didn't they didn't have to direct but if they were writing the flash imagine that with with that lego humor in the flash that would be awesome so and and i understand why they're not doing it they're focused on uh some other film called uh star wars story han solo i think star wars anthology uh star oh yeah star wars story and han solo so um (laughs) oh he also did dark shadows um yeah the vampire slayer he's apparently wrote the script for beetlejuice 2 and well that's i don't think that's lego batman movie so we have all we know. He's an author and a screenplay. He's written a few bad, badly received movies. So why is this guy getting the directing job? I can. The only thing I can think of is Phil Lord and Chris Miller recommended him because look, he's writing the Batman Lego movie, right? So he obviously knows them. You know, he he's interacted with them. He's probably friends with them. And they were like, look, we got it. We have to do Han Solo. You know, we're we're not gonna do you know flash over han solo so this is the guy who we think can can handle this property for you guys and maybe he loves the flash maybe he's passionate he went in there and pitched some great idea and they're running with it and i'm not against you know new up-and-comers getting a chance but the thing is he hasn't directed anything he i mean he has two directing credits but they're not for feature films they're for oh it's not even no he doesn't even have two it's one he directed a few TV episodes of the hard times of R. R. J. Berger, which I have no idea what that is, but um, so he has n- not much experience directing. So I'm curious as to what their thinking was behind that, giving him a huge because this is gonna be, you know, it's not like Avengers or Justice League, but it's gonna be a, a pretty, it's gonna be like Ant Man level type blockbuster film. So I don't know how he's gonna be able to deal with it. So I sell it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about you, Jake? How do you how do you feel about uh, this guy? I well, I feel like there's there's two options or two ways to look at it. Either like Jacob said, uh, Lord and Miller direct or um, they'd recommended him. They for recommended it, yeah. him, or it was a good enough of a pitch to where Warner Brothers like, okay, let's bring this guy in, and then we can manhandle him and exactly. do what we want and not pay him much because he's a rookie director like you guys were Ooh, saying that, oh that worries me man and, that really worries me that it does worry me too because not only was I, I it's not that I wasn't happy I was kind of disappointed with the Ezra Miller casting 
as Flash. Um, and then you do you get a director like this guy. The Flash is probably one of my favorite DC characters. And right now, I'm kind of bummed out by the direction it's going so far. Um, so if I was to buy or sell, I'll sell it just like Jacob. But um, <laughs> it just, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was either the best pitch ever made to Warner Brothers. And, you know, he's a rookie director, so they can they can manhandle him. Yeah, or, I think that's more likely. Miller and Lord recommended him enough to where, you know, Warner Brothers just I ran. I think it's a mixture of both. So, I mean... Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, you can't judge somebody on who doesn't have a direct, uh, any kind of directing experience. So we just kind of have to wait and see. Yeah, not that you know DC is Marvel at, at this point right now, but they are clearly trying to go for people who you know are up and coming and give like good enough pitches that are close to the vision that they want for you know this Flash um movie um i'm looking at his uh writing credits dark shadows um apparently uh, the lego batman movie um these are films with like somewhat like kind of like humor to it whether it be you know dark or yeah you know, i mean the funny. i think the flash has to be humorous you know it's it's in its character right yeah so i mean it's gonna be an ant-man type, type film it's yeah. not the heist aspect no well, I mean, maybe well, I could see a flash heist movie. Mm. That well, I mean, think about like uh, Quicksilver and X Men: Days of Future Past. That was a heist breaking that yeah, needle out. You know, this, this movie comes after Justice League, which is which he apparently well, is going to be involved in Justice yeah, League. So that's true. Well, he's going to be fighting another speedster. I'm pretty sure. I mean, how how else can he? Who's he going to fight? You know, Grodd. Yeah, there's all kinds of people he could fight. Yeah. Captain Cold. Well, I mean, it just all depends on how this uh, cinematic universe. I mean, they're going for darker, more gritty, grounded kind of stuff. So, oh, that's true. Um, but I think the Flash is going to be the lighter side of that. You know, that and Green yeah. Lantern. Yeah, the, the more colorful side. Exactly. Of it. Yeah. yeah. But I sell it. Um, you know, give me an established director. Hell, give me Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen. No, uh, like you know, no, why not? Anybody else? No, no, yeah. No. no. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any names right now, so I'm just throwing names out. But you guys let us know. Give us some names. Who do you think will should be the... I mean, we're getting this guy. He but is if you have director, another guy... So we don't have a choice. Lord of Miller. Yeah. Oh, I mean... <laughs> Bring Lord of Miller back. You, know, <laughs> you can't say no to Lord Miller. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think of this guy yeah. directing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so moving so. on... Uh, it seems like we talk about Bad Boys Three uh, quite a bit on this podcast, but I, I I love Bad Boys, you know, uh, it's it's awesome. So I, I only decided to bring this up because it's coming from the guy we've all been waiting for, Will Smith. He confirms that Bad Boys Three will come within the next twelve to sixteen months, as in start shooting. So they've been having discussions wow. behind closed doors. Uh, we know that there's a director in Joe Carnahan who's been maybe not confirmed but has been working on getting a screenplay going for this movie with uh, David Gwenheim from uh, Safe House. So Bad Boys 3 has been in the works. We know Martin Lawrence is in for it because, you know, he's not doing much these days. And we finally have confirmation from Will Smith that, you know, but then the next 12 to 16 months, Bad Boys 3 is coming. So I just want to ask you guys real quick. We don't have to talk a lot about this because there's not really much to talk about. Um, are you now excited for Bad Boys 3 and 4? Is it too late? And yeah, just, I mean, your reaction. Let's start with uh, Jake this time. Uh, I'm totally in. Um, yeah. Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, two of the greatest buddy cop movies ever. Mm -hmm. um, especially Bad Boys 2. I don't know why I like Bad Boys 2 so much more than Bad Boys 1, but I did. Um, I think it might have just been that scene where his daughter's going on a date. Oh, man, Bad that's Boys. hilarious. I always wanted to pull that scene because I have two little sisters. What does he say? You look like you're 30. It's just it's, it's you at least so 30. funny. And, you know, um, I, I believe that Joe Carnahan will do a good job with this film. It's kind of – it fits his style. And now that Will Smith is uh, officially saying, you know, it's, it's coming, it's coming – um, it's awesome news and I'm very excited for it Jacob I 
I'm not the hugest Bad Boys fan. I enjoyed the films, but it's not something that like I'm not. I don't own the movies, you know. And I usually when I love movies, I buy them. But um, I like this because we're seeing a change of, I guess, a change in ego of Will Smith because you know five six years ago he was on top of the world, king, king of the box office. He was the man. Yeah. Yeah, let's say ten years, eight to ten years ago, um, and you know there's a lot of rumors going around that he's hard to work with he demands his kids to be in the movie he demands to be the the focus of every movie and now we're kind of see him you know easing that down and taking a back seat and because he's he's in an ensemble cast with suicide squad i i could see him eight years ago like i'll never do another bad boys movie like that's below me but now he realizes he's not he's not the guy on the top of the mountain anymore so he needs to you know he if i feels like he's doing stuff for the fans now you know, so mm-hmm. it, from that aspect, I, it really excites me because I love Will Smith as an actor. You know, and hearing all those rumors about him being a douche, you know, was kind of me, turning me away from him. But and I'm I'm really looking forward to Concussion, and I'm excited for his career now that he's kind of like put his ego aside. So that part of it really excites me. And he's rapping again. Is he really? Yeah, he dropped a new song. No album. way. Uh, well, he has a single or remix. Yeah. Uh, Fiesta. To what? Uh, it's, it's a, like some, a party song like or a what? Spanish party Are you kind joking of. Me? Uh, wow, I got to check that out. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Got to check that out. Um the rumor about him and Tarantino getting into it over Django well, yeah, is not true. Ha, you don't know that. No, I do. You don't know that. I, Tarantino said, said it himself. Tarantino could just say that just to like hush people down, we you know. We got insider information over here, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying you don't know. People lie <laughs> You, tr- you don't trust anyone in Hollywood. Well, they then, say what they got to say. Well, then we pretty much have to stop podcasting <laughs> if that's the case. All right. Well, I mean, anyways, I was worried for a while, you know, that he wasn't going to do this because, all right, Independence Day 2 is coming out and he's not a part of it. They're moving on. Men in Black wants to reboot without Will Smith. They're moving on. That's two out of three franchises for Will Smith. And now, Bad Boys, I was worried, but now he, you know, put all my worries to rest. He's back in it. I'm excited. And I was going to write this in my write up article on, on site, but I'd rather say it here. For me, Bad Boys, as far as Buddy Cop films, for me, they're what the Lethal Weapon films were for our bad generation. generation. Yeah. When I think of Buddy Cop films, I think of Bad Boys. Lethal Weapon's great, but, I mean, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith. Well, it's you know. more our generation, you know? Right, yeah. Even uh, though I I love Lethal Weapon movies more. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, I mean, they're, they're better films, but, yeah. I mean, you know, Bad Boys, you can't go wrong. Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, you have to have these two. You can't oh, yeah. do you Bad can't, Boys. No, no way. Don't even do it if you can't right. get both of them back. Yeah. And if Will Smith's in, then it's Martin Lawrence is in. Yeah. You know? So, uh... Sorry, right along. You guys ain't making a third film because <laughs> Bad Boys is here. Ice Cube, Kevin oh Hart. Oh my you guys goodness. Like, That's go a joke. Do something else. So yeah, you guys let us know. Are you excited for Bad Boys 3 now that Will Smith is a part of it? Uh, let us know. And let us know also how you feel felt about the first two films. And do you want Michael Bay to direct or not? Let us know. All right, moving on. Uh, we have some... Harsh words from Daniel Craig. He was asked recently if he would like to play Blond, uh, James Bond uh, once again. And Daniel Craig gave some pretty harsh words in his interview when asked about this. So I'll just read what Daniel Craig says and then whether you guys buy or sell that he really means what he says about playing James Bond again. So this is Daniel Craig. He says, now I'd rather break this glass and slash my wrist. No, not at the moment. Not at all. I'm over it at the moment. We're done. All I want to do is move on. And then he went on to say, uh, you know, I haven't given it any thought about playing James Bond again, you know, for at least a year or two. I just, I don't want to think about it. I don't know what the next step is. I have no idea. Not because I'm trying to be cagey. Who the fuck knows? This is Daniel Craig. At the moment, we've done it. 
I'm in discussion with anybody about anything. If I did another Bond movie, it would only be for the money. So what do you guys think? Is Daniel Craig really oh, fed up with James Bond, or is this just an in-the-moment kind of frustration? He's done four. This will be his fourth film now. Do you see him coming back for another one? Jacob? All right, here's the thing. Even if he is tired of doing the films, you don't come out and say these things publicly. Like, you're basically disrespecting the Bond franchise, the the directors and all the actors you've worked with, and the studio. Like, you're saying basically implying that you had a horrible time making these movies, you hated it, you, you weren't in it. So that makes me think, while he was making the movies, he was like, I can't wait till this is over. I just want the money. Like... And, you know, people are dicks, you know, there's in, the, in this world, people are dicks and there's no way around it. But, you know, a lot of people are good at hiding that they're a dick. This, he's just coming out and being a dick. And I like Daniel Craig. I have no reason not to like him up until now. And I just don't like the way he's handling this at all. Like this franchise, if, if it, excuse me, if it wasn't for this franchise, nobody would know your name as, as much as they do. Like you would not be a global globally known actor if it was not for the bond franchise you would not be as rich as you are you would not be who you are so show a little respect to the studio and the brand and this iconic character who's kind of made you into who you are that i mean that's all i really got to say about it and don't do another one i don't even want him to do another one right give us idris elba yeah i don't know about that well all right jake what about you what do you think about uh um i'll, I'll agree with mo with what jacob said uh most of it i mean except that last <laughs> part uh, please come back for another one um no i mean yeah he shouldn't have said the comments um it's obviously some pretty harsh stuff but also at the same time the movie was announced last november it comes out this november which means you shoot a what 150 200 million dollar movie with action with the name of James Bond in like a short amount of time. I'm sure he's just exhausted of what happened over the last year. Cause it is a really, really short shoot. Like for a movie like this, we usually see a long shoot that takes a period of time. But this one, they kind of rushed to get that release date. Um, so I just, I mean, maybe he, he may just be really tired and exhausted and beat up from everything going so quickly. Um, or maybe he really does feel that, uh, feel this way, like his comments are saying, but um, I do want to see him back for another one. I think it depends on what happens with the franchise because as we know, or most of us anyway, Sony's rights end with Spectre. So Fox who knows what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like stuff with social media nowadays. Uh, it's that you can't just worry about what you say on social media. you also got to worry about um, what you say in interviews. and in Yeah, definitely. Because... Uh, it will be rubbed the wrong way and you know um, yeah he just should have said them and we don't really know the real reason behind it and why he said them but we can just go with what we hear and uh, obviously it's not a good sign so yeah that public image is everything nowadays um, yeah Daniel Craig is doing what Josh Whedon almost did you know um, <clears throat> as far as lengthy productions and how much toll it, it does on a person their mind their body um it's reportedly Spectre was an eight or eight to nine month uh, production shoot, which is pretty long. And, um, you know, this is his fourth James Bond film. Uh, and how many million dollars are you getting to, you know, shoot this movie? Well, yeah, but money can't buy you everything, you know. So, I mean, it'll buy but, me peace of mind when I'm, you know, working hard shooting action scenes. Yeah, but you know, he doesn't. Uh, he's just. I mean, what? I'm not defending what he what he yeah, said. No, I know? understand. You need to like chill, all right, Daniel Craig, because you have zero chill right now. <laughs> you just all right. Take a take a break. Go, you know, do what James Bond does. You know, go do it on in real life. Time. You know, not just on the set. But um, you know, I clearly he's fatigued, in my opinion. Enough is enough. I want mm -hmm. Idris Elba. You pretty much opened the door now for Idris Elba. I agree. Like, no, here, Idris Elba so is I'm all for freedom of speech, right? Like, I, yeah. I I hate that nobody can speak their mind without getting bashed for it. But especially nowadays. But why are you gonna disres 
be disrespectful though like go out of your way to like that's so dramatic i would rather break break this glass and slip my wrist than like it's different it'd be different if he said like i just i don't want anything to do with bond right now i don't want to think about it he could have just said that but i want to break this glass and slip my wrist like wow that's hey that's extreme if there's one thing we've learned in the past is that hollywood can be very ruthless ruthless and dangerous you know we've seen i mean look at heath ledger i hate to bring this up but you know how exhausted he was look at his last interview right before you know he died he's just you know exhausted and not the heath ledger you know the heartthrob person that we all know hollywood can destroy people sometimes you know and I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, they, yeah, and they purposely... I could understand, like, I imagine, like, he didn't he didn't know when the next Bond was going to shoot, and they just called him out of nowhere, like, hey, we're shooting in, in a month. And, like, he was probably pissed, but he has to do it. He's contractually obligated. So I could see something like that happening, but still, like, have a little, like, self-control. Like, don't... I don't know. Do you know. guys remember what, when Idris Elba uh, left uh, the Mandela? He just finished shooting Mandela. And then he had to report for Thor the Dark World. I don't know. Yeah, he no, I don't comments. know. He said some comments. Yeah. He was just like, God, Marvel. Like, I, I just, I can't believe, like, you just called me. But uh, Oh, what? His three scenes? But still, you know, <laughs> sometimes people want to take a break. But yeah, that's what I happens understand. when you sign those multi-picture contracts. Exactly. They will you call you. You sign the contract. That's the way Hollywood is. So, you guys, let us know. Do you think Daniel Craig will return as James Bond? Were his comments a little bit out of line, uh, or do you have some sympathy for him? Let us know. And do you want to see Idris Elba as James Bond? I do. All right, uh, moving on. We have an update um, for the Transformers universe. So Transformers is memorable for a lot of us, but not in a good way. Um, The first film was amazing, while the three that followed it were not so amazing. Yeah. So Hasbro uh, came out recently and said that they have Transformers planned for the next, at least the next 10 years. And in those 10 years, they have uh, four films. Well, I mean, they're saying get ready for Transformers 5, 6, 7, and 8. And they're saying they have so much stories to tell in the form of prequels, sequels, and spinoffs. We know that they've had a writer, writer's room. Uh, assembled with some really high talents uh steven denight zach penn uh who's robert that? kirkman from what yeah yeah thank you and uh the academy award-winning writer uh akiva goldsman yes yeah so hasbro is saying get ready for a lot more transformers films at least for the next 10 years um with everything that they've done so far, are you guys looking forward to this? Are you buying it, or are you just like, okay, whatever? Like, you're clearly doing this, you know, just because you want to milk the cow, make a billion know, dollars like, each movie. Each movie. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask Jake first. Transformers five, six, seven, and eight. Are you excited about it, sir? Um, I'm kind of torn, and so the Transformers franchise to me is very special. Um, I grew up lining the cartoons, you know, the comic books, whatever it is. Um, I love the first movie, and then it kind of just went downhill from there. There were redeeming parts here and there, but there were not very many. Um, I was very happy to hear that they put together this giant writing room with fantastic names like Stephen Knight, who did Daredevil, um, the TV show Daredevil, Robert Kirkman, who does Walking Dead. It's like they're putting together all these great minds. You know, it, it, there there might be a bright spot to look forward to in the Transformers universe. And then they come out and say that Michael Bay's directed Transformers 5. <laughs> did they? Yeah. They did, yeah. And it's like, oh, everything that happened over the last three, four months all went to crap. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, how can you not use the minds that you have to build these stories? And then you're going to let someone like Michael Bay come in who has done four of them already... And has blown into bits doing, you know, whether it's Bud Light commercials or blowing stuff out that doesn't need to be blown up or whatever it is. It's like... Or over-sexualizing women. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's his time to step away. It's his time to step away from the franchise and let someone else do that. And 
Paramount needs to realize that. I mean, they put together this writing room just to write the movies and come up with this universe. Why not give one of them, Stephen Knight, the yeah. reins oh, to the man. franchise? Oh, man. Why not let someone who's in that writing room talking about what to do run the next movie for the franchise? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I mean, they also announced that whole animated feature film, which I'm fine with, but they've been talking for months, and then the only thing they come up with is a Transformers 5 with Michael Bay in an animated movie. It's like, what, what, have, what has really been accomplished between all these minds? It's either... Nothing has really been done in the movie or in the writing room, or something was done, and Paramount and someone else totally bashed on it and put everything away, because Michael Bay has the reins to everything. So um, it bugs me. I mean, I'm looking forward to more Transformers movies. I would just the only way it works is if Michael Bay is just kicked off everything, because he doesn't. It's not that I don't like the guy. It's just he makes bad movies and. It's his time to step away. He's done four of them. Give it to someone else. Let someone else put their mind to it. Stephen Knight. And just go from there. I mean, I like the the ideas they're coming up with, like an, like an origin story on Cybertron. That's something we've all wanted to that see. That would be awesome. But why do it animated? Why not do it a CGI movie? Like, why give an animated movie? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Like, they're... I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Jacob? So I... See, I don't know much about Transformers. You know, I liked Transformers growing up. I actually really liked Transformers growing up. I liked the first movie a lot. Um, but, yeah, these movies, these last few have been horrible. And I didn't even watch Transformers 4 in theaters. I, You know, I Netflix it a few months back, and it is awful. It is complete garbage. Like They ruined what the Transformers why, were. Why even make... So, the daughter was underage. She was 17 or something. And the boyfriend was like 20. That dog. Like, oh my god. They had to... Ex why not just make her 18? Why Why make her 17 and then have to throw in that... Oh, we're, by law, we're, we're legally... Da, 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 da. Anyways, that's off topic. Um, I just... I would like to see uh, an origin like story of their race on Cybertron. Well, that's, what they're, that's what they're doing. Yeah, with the, but, it's but you know why they're not going to make a live action? Because it would be so expensive. And that's why that's, the, mm. that's why in these movies they focus on the human characters so much. Because it's not expensive to shoot the humans in a shed yelling at each other. But it's expensive to shoot those CGI scenes. So I would love to see a live action CGI uh, version of the you know of their old planet you know? that would be incredible I mean obviously there'd be no human characters involved but that'd be cool what if there was like a space mission and they like, like went through a, like a black hole and they ended up humans ended up on Subtron well that writer's room need, leg, legitimately needs to play the game Transformers Fall of Cybertron do humans go there? no it's all about this Fall of Cybertron Oh. And it's a war between the Dinobots and or the the Decepticons and the Autobots. Wow, I think that would be incredible. And then it's going to take what's in that story, the video game, and implement it into a live action movie or yeah, a CGI. Yeah, I just at, at a certain point. Okay, the reason Michael Bay's directing is because of the money. They they have a formula, and you don't mess with a formula that works. They care they care more about money than than creative. Yes. being creative yes. and making quality movies that's every studio does but you can make quality movies and make money look at marvel look at you know you can do it so why don't they they know the critic reaction they're aware of it so why don't they you know how much more money they could make if all the critics are saying this these films are great i guarantee you you make like a transformers movie if Transformers 4 was the quality of the first one even yeah or let's yeah let's say even the quality of the first one I it freaking damn near cracks 2 billion I think uh, I wouldn't go that with the, no, why not dude I'm telling you good reviews will make a big difference and even if like imagine people like us you know there's more people like us out there than you think who see like a movie like Ant-Man or Avengers Age of Ultron and then goes back and watch them four times you think big Transformers fans are going to watch Transformers 4 again? No. So, you make a lot of money on that, too. And so, anyways, 
I have nothing against Michael Bay. I, I don't think he's a horrible director, but he needs to step away from this franchise. And why would he... Everyone in Hollywood is bashing him for it. Why would he want to go through that again? And like, but he doesn't care. I guess he gets he got oh, money. He said in interviews he does not care. Yeah, you guys so. are gonna watch these films regardless, and he's right. Damn it. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, were you done or? No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, if a Cybertron movie was gonna happen prequel, honestly, I would want Michael Bay to direct it. Because one thing I can say about Michael Bay, everything human related sucks about his Transformers films. But when it comes to the fight scenes between the Autobots and the, and the Decepticons, I mean, Age of Extinction, it was, it was, uh, it was all right. But I mean, he, he can, you know, direct action sequences between, you know, the, the Transformers pretty good. And if Cybertron's going to be an entire movie of Autobots and Decepticons, no Mark Wahlberg, no Blondies or anything like that, I'm all for it. You know, that's just my opinion. But there has to be a story. And Michael Bay is terrible at stories. Yeah, right. You're, yeah, you're right. He's not going to tell okay. stories. So it's like... I mean, he should try stories in other films and like Pearl Harbor. But, I mean, that's different. Um, yeah, I'll agree with what you said, Jacob. It's all for money, you know. They every film has cracked a billion dollars, right? Greedy people. I yeah, hate, greedy hate people. people. <laughs> I hate them. Um, yeah, I actually I forgot that they announced uh, Michael Bay to direct five, and it's like bumming me out. It's like yeah. talking about this. It just like bums me. <laughs> it's out. like you have all the talented players on a football team, but then you bring back the head coach, yeah. who doesn't know how to, you know, use everyone for their strengths and weaknesses it's really unfortunate guys um we'll see you know maybe he does turn it around who knows maybe 13 hours of the secret soldiers of benghazi is fucking phenomenal you never know we never know i liked painting game painting game was pretty good and maybe he comes back to the franchise and okay so you're shaking your head i'm gonna ask you a question right now i'm gonna ask you both a question and this might be a little bit tough but let's see which way you go who would you rather see direct a fifth film Michael Bay, Transformers, or George Lucas, Star Wars? <laughs> I'd rather shoot myself before watching Jeez, either of them. Come on, answer the question. It's a, it's a Bay, tough question. Michael Bay, Transformers 5, 100% because I don't give a shit really about these Transformers movies. I My heart and soul is Star Wars. So <laughs> that's there's my answer right there. Jake? I'd rather shoot myself before watching any of them. Yeah. I, I, I don't care. Like... <laughs> All right, Daniel Craig. I just don't. I don't <laughs> want to see either of them happen. Like, You'd rather punch Geo's window and, and slit your wrist than oh watch God, one of those movies. Jesus! What? It just it does not make sense to me. I, I do not get it. No, you're right. You know they they get all these talented. You know Zach Penn who, who had a hand in the Avengers. You know and everyone else. Dollar signs, baby. Stephen Knight who did not only did Daredevil, he did Spartacus. Spartacus. For four seasons. Oh it's yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, Paramount likes what they have right now. Um, it's it's their choice. It's a stupid choice, but it's their choice. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's an audience there for these films. And real quickly, I'll just uh, restate, you know, what I wrote in, in the write-up, which you guys can check on MovieTalkExpress.com. Um, they're aware that the fourth film wasn't the hit. Well, that's why they brought these... And it's crea this creative team. Is. It's domestic you, numbers went down. You erased that the excitement of the creative team by announcing Michael Bay. So. Yeah, but and the only reason why they have a creative team is that they could, they could tell more interesting stories going forward and keep it at that billion dollar mark because for the fourth film was mainly international numbers, you know. Um, so yeah, you guys let us know in the comments what do you think? Uh, Transformers Five directed by Michael Bay. Did Does you hear? I don't know if you guys heard that what the fifth one was going to be about there's a rumor that came out a while ago are they bringing back Bumblebee? Shia, Shia something about Bumblebee mm -hmm. it was going to follow half or uh, it was going to follow two parts Mark Wahlberg on Earth with uh, the room many Autobots and it will also follow Optimus Prime going after the creators in space really so it'll be a straight sequel to the fourth one <sighs> no no yeah I mean, I was ex I was ex at first I was excited about Mark Wahlberg, you know, taking over. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, this guy can. I remember 
I mean, I we didn't really know you that well before Transformers I was pumped. came out. Yeah, I was pumped with the, those trailers, the, the trailers. freaking Dinobots, man. They Holy okay, crap. they ruined the Dinobots. First <laughs> yeah. Of all. all right, we got to go to the next subject, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> moving on. Uh, next up, we have news regarding X Men Apocalypse. Who's looking forward to this movie? I am. Jake is yeah. discouraged from Transformers. No, Days of Future Past was amazing, so why wouldn't you be? Just on the back I'm not looking forward to this. I'm not looking forward to this news, but I'm looking forward to the movie. All right. Well, uh, X Men Apocalypse has come out with a synopsis, and it reveals uh, something rather interesting. So I'm going to read the synopsis, and then you guys give me your reactions, starting with uh, Jacob. Since the dawn of civilization, he was worshipped as a god, Apocalypse, the first and most powerful mutant from Marvel's X-Men universe, amassed the powers of many other mutants becoming immortal and invincible. Upon awakening after thousands of years, he is delusioned with the world as he finds it and recruits a team of powerful mutants, including a disheartened Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, to cleanse mankind and create a new world order over which he will reign. As the fate of Earth hangs in balance, Raven, Jennifer Lawrence, with the help of Professor X, James McCovey, must lead a team of young X-Men to stop their greatest nemesis and save mankind from complete destruction. The revelation, Raven, Jennifer Lawrence, is leading the X-Men. What do you think about this, Jacob? I can't wait to hear his reaction. I sell it. <laughs> Even though we're not doing buy and sell. Um, I Here's the thing. I'm very much looking forward to this movie. And I like the Raven character. I like the way they've developed her in these two movies. But this is such BS because the only reason they're making Raven a main character is because it's Jennifer Lawrence. That's the only reason. I know she actually... I know in Days of Future Past, the actual comic storyline, Raven had a big part to do with that. And it was actually... From the comics but raven or mystique would not was not a main character in the original x-men movies she was a big villain she was magneto's number two but she was not a, a main focus in these in these x-men movies uh since first class she has been a main focus and make the best movie possible don't worry about who your actors are like they, when they cast Jennifer Lawrence in X-Men First Class, she wasn't the big superstar that she is right now. So now all of a sudden, they have this big superstar under contract. Let's make her the fo Let's alter the story and make her a focal point because she's a big name. And she's going to sell the movie and she's going to make us the most money. Again, this is a theme, greedy people. And <laughs> besides that, I'm very much looking forward to this movie. But get out of here. I mean, I understand she's going to be the veteran. Even like Cyclops is going to be young, because he's supposed to be the leader. He's going to be young, so I guess who else is going to lead it, right? Right. So I don't know. Jake, I dig it. Oh, <laughs> I dig it. Uh, it's because the Days of Future storyline wiped everything clean, and um, maybe it changed the type of character that we'll be seeing because. As you can tell in the synopsis, they don't call her Mystique, they call her Raven. Yeah. She so, kind of became a hero. Um, it wipes everything clean and it kind of changes everything and, you know, it makes sense almost in a way. Uh, because with characters like Storm and Psylocke and, uh, I mean, even Magneto and then you have Angel going over to play with Apocalypse. Um... Who do you have that can leave the X Men really? No Wolverine, right? Where's Beast? Well, Beast Nicholas is Hart. there, but be is Beast the leader? Not Beast really. Is really leader. And this it is makes the sense. Don't get me wrong. Story wise, it does. And but Raven, and Raven, you know, she was she was a main part of that core team in uh, the first movie, First Class. Um, so I mean, I'm cool with it. It just I don't know. I mean. It works. I like that they're kind of going back to the Raven persona more than Mystique. Um, I think it's a cool aspect, kind of going switching back and forth. But I know a lot of people are going to hate on it because, like you said, that they're focusing on uh, Jennifer Lawrence being the star or whatever. But I'm okay with it. I mean, she hasn't done anything wrong so far to where I haven't liked her or anything like that. Oh, I love Jennifer Lawrence. So, don't get me wrong. I I love her, but I don't. 
they, they, the story wouldn't be the same if she wasn't who she is. Like it would the, the story would be different. She wouldn't be in the forefront. I think. No, yeah, I agree with you. I just, I just think it's a. But it's not a bad thing having Jennifer Lawrence as your lead in an X Men movie. Well, I mean, it, it just kind of fits with what the trilogy's been doing, though, because I mean, it's like it's almost like I don't want to compare it to it, but Luke laying on in Star Wars, you think Professor X, Magneto, and Mystique in this trilogy of X Men movies? Yeah, kind of so, in a way. Yeah. So it, it kind of fits with what they've been doing the last few movies. So you, this, oh, yeah, go you ahead, go kind ahead. of Check. changed my mind on it a little bit. You did, so I'm I'm cool with it because I can't complain. It makes sense because you don't. Hugh Jackman is not gonna be. He, I guarantee he's gonna have a cameo for right. sure. I don't think he will. Oh, we saw the bet. <laughs> he's gonna have a cameo. He's, I don't know. He's gonna have, he's gonna be in it. I'll bet you too. But um, so it makes sense. Who's who's the biggest next biggest star? Jennifer Lawrence. So yeah, I mean. As far as this story, the way they've set it up goes, it makes sense. I'm a little bit over Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique Raven, honestly. I mean, she goes from nearly killing the president to leading a team of X-Men. I'm not sure how that, you know, is going to play out. Honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, like you guys said, it, it makes sense. So, you know, why not? But I'm just... From the outside perspective, from Jennifer, from uh, general audiences, they're going to be like, "Oh wow, they're focusing on Jennifer Lawrence again." Well, maybe, yes, Jennifer maybe Lawrence. Jennifer general audiences like it. I don't know. It's well, just well, me I, being my, my best friend. Me being uh, a pessimist. When we, when we were talking about Apocalypse, he said, "I'm gonna, I'm probably not going to watch the movie if they focus on Jennifer Lawrence." Again. Really? That's wow. Because. Uh, it's Jennifer Lawrence fever right now. Well, yeah, it's, it's like cool to hate on her now because she's the biggest movie star in the world. But some people may, might feel like we're getting too much of her, don't you think? We're I mean, not, though. What What was she in? She Hunger Games yeah. and Joy this year? Well, that How many movies was Josh Brolin in this year? Well, no, it it I, feels like a lot. Well, yeah, it's because she's being know. plastered everywhere, though. Yeah, she's but... The golden girl. Yeah. Which I'm totally fine with because I adore the hell out of that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hating on Jennifer Lawrence. I'm just, you know, trying to, you know, argue on both sides. But, you know, um, yeah. I mean, sure. Why not? Go ahead. Lead the X-Men. This will be the culmination for, uh, you know, the first Cat Clash trilogy. I'm more interested to see whether they come back or not. We hope that McCovey oh, and Fassbender Fast come Bender back. Oh, McCovey better freaking stay. At least for, just do three more. I'll be good. I'll be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah so you guys let us know in the comments uh do you like raven leading the x-men um or not let us know all right and now we are moving on to our open mics topic um where um each podcast we come up with a topic to discuss it could be movie related it could be whatever we want we just have an open discussion about it and this week i chose um movie theater experiences Jacob and I went to go check out Sicario yesterday, and it was one of the. It was for me. It was the worst movie theater experience this year. Not the movie. The, the no, people in the, the movie. The, the people in the movie. Really? You know, we had people. Yeah. We had oh people talking. Goodness. People kicking my chair. We had a security guard come in and tell these people to shut up who were talking in the far back. And the girl next to me, you are not at home on a recliner, She's like putting her feet up. Anyways, continue doing her nails and all that. No. Uh, yeah, all that. So I want to ask you guys, uh, in honor of yesterday's uh, terrible experience, give us some of your memorable movie experiences. The craziest thing that happened. The funnest crowd you ever part of. It could be a positive thing, too. The longest line you ever waited in in movies. Uh, you know, bad customer service, whatever. Anything movie theater related. Like, what comes to mind, and I'll leave it up to whoever wants to start first. Go ahead, Jake. Uh, well, I don't have anything, well, that I can remember negative-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's people in the theater all the time where I turn my head, they're what smack, smacking popcorn. Or on their phone. Yeah, it's just like that kind of stuff, but that, that kind of happens all the time. Nothing like where someone's yelling or talking or anything like that. Uh, Positive-wise, um, the most recent memories that I have... Two of the best times I've had in the movie theater of the last few years. Um, I this year specifically, I've never had more fun watching a movie than Jurassic World. Uh, not not just because you know it's a big action movie or whatever. Um, there was a very there were very many different generations in the film because of what Jurassic Park did. 
and it kind of brought back that magic to what the franchise was and it was just very enjoyable to kind of watch it with all those kind of people um and be in that kind of crowd and whatnot uh it was very similar the first time when we saw avengers age of ultron in imax with all those people oh that uh, was exciting it was fun to be there with everybody and kind of witness it um but i will i will say that the most recently the the best time i had in the theater was last year watching godzilla oh um, man that last I saw battle the, well scene. i saw it in imax and oh. not knowing a lot of the character like a history of the of the character and whatnot when oh, when the, his back oh. for the first time people started actually cheering like clapping mm. their hands during the movie and then i the saw tail it started lighting up yeah and i didn't know what was going on i'm sitting next to my buddy and we see it happen and we look at each other we're like no way and people are like clapping their hands and cheering during a movie i've never witnessed that before watching a movie um so that was by far the most the best experience i've had uh i'm hoping it happens again at some point because it's so much fun it gives you goosebumps like li- like being in that kind of situation where people are just like clapping and yelling and for for someone to win a battle or whatever it is yeah, yeah. um but as for like waiting in line uh longest line you've ever waited in for a the one that i can remember that i it's the only thing i can remember is iron man 3 i was living in idaho at the time and i sat in line uh for almost close to two hours with my girlfriend from the time and um the line was really long it was it was at a strip mall so the line was going through a hallway and we were just waiting outside and it was opening night um that's the longest line i've ever been to but i know it'll be broken by the time december rolls around so uh those are my kinds of experience in movie theaters uh was i haven't had a negative one yet and i'm not i'm trying to cross my fingers there isn't one but i'm sure there will be at some point so. was it worth the wait for iron man 3 it wasn't the time uh okay. <laughs> every time i've seen it since then it's kind of i've kind of been picking things out but but the first right. time you watch it you're like wow like really cool experience um so it was worth it at the time jacob what about you you reminded me of the godzilla one man because i didn't know either i didn't know what was going on and i just you see the little blue light light up and then you hear it like it's like charging up and when he rips the head yeah, the, off of that, the head part is the big oh, one when yeah. he blows it into the and then he rips the head off like, well that was exciting because you think he's gonna rip his head apart he, but then he blows the atomic breath down his throat and it's like, like rip, yeah dude and you just like light up everyone was going crazy and similar thing in Jurassic there's a similar moment in Jurassic World I don't want to ruin it because it's still relatively new film it's, some people haven't in, seen it it's not on DVD no it's right? fine I, I'm not one to spoil Geo unlike yourself but um come on anyways so bad experiences last night there this that's not my worst i have a worst uh one that was worse but um so last night first of all there was literally a couple sitting row behind us to the far right they were talking for 30 minutes straight the whole time like imagine that jake and this is a quiet movie. That, I, this it, is not like... And I, I would be one to get up and be like, shut... This is not Avengers off. where it's like... Bah, 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 like, where people are talking and you can't even hear them. Oh, it's a this character is, movie. You have to listen. This is Sicario. There's a lot of silence in that movie. Yeah. So, I wanted to get up so bad and go say something. But, um... So, somebody went and told the security and security came and kicked them out. I was so happy. But, also... And even the girl, the girl who went and got security, where they were on their freaking phones the whole time. So that too. And then the girl next to me was like laying on her boyfriend with like her feet all the way up on like two chairs in front of her. Oh my goodness. So annoying. But my, the, the worst experience I had was when I went to see, I'll never forget it. I went and just see the movie Notorious, the, you know, the movie about, yeah, about yeah. Biggie, Biggie yeah. Smalls. Yeah. There were these two ladies in there that were everything every line that happened everything they said they were laughing and and i don't mind laughing but they were like they were talking hella loud like they were have, adding commentary add any commentary to the whole movie and someone went and got security told the security told them can you guys please you know keep it down they were right behind me too and then they can't they quieted down for a little bit and then they start up again they kept talking like adding comments and jokes and everything in between every line that the characters were saying and then security had to come back and actually ask them to leave so and it, it was a lot more elaborate than that but um 
it, that was my worst experience because these these ladies were like they weren't the people that we witnessed last night were like kind of like mumbling like trying to stay quiet but you can hear them the whole time these ladies were straight out like talking as loud as i'm talking right now so th those are my horrible experiences but yeah as far as good experiences like definitely godzilla definitely jurassic world um and even like uh, the atmosphere of avengers edge of ultron was pretty damn awesome i'll also say uh the original avengers um oh yeah i went with my good buddy shaw we went to fairfield to go see an imax and we walked into the theater and there was a group of girls all dressed up in the characters. Oh my goodness! And that's awesome. Character, and they were like having fun with the crowd, you know that kind of stuff. So that was a very cool atmosphere as well. Right. What about you, Gio? Oh my! Other than last night, my experiences go as far back as me as a child. Um, have you guys ever seen the movie Beverly Hills Ninja with uh, yeah, Chris of Farley? Course. No. No. Really? Really? Wow. Well, Chris Farley. I mean, we all know he's he's like one of the. One of the great comedians. How many of those did they know? make? Just one? One. Oh, remember Luke Kane was in it? Yeah. The actor who played Luke Kane? Yeah, Luke Kane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was in an auditorium and I was like uh, seven or eight years old. But I was laughing my ass off in that movie. And when a kid is laughing as much as I did, like I was laughing like I was on something. Like, I mean, I love Chris Farley. And the audience was actually laughing at me, you know, like you know, laughing with yeah. me, you know, because they're like, "This kid is having the time of his life watching, you know, this uh, comedy movie." And you know, I just, I just thought that was a cool experience. I actually had an experience with the uh, Notorious as well. Really? That's ironic. Yeah, I know it's weird. Um, I was uh, going out on a date to watch the movie, and uh, before this movie started, this uh, fight kind of broke out. Um, it was this uh, high school kid trying to be hard, you know, uh, stepping up on this one guy who was sitting with his girlfriend, trying to fight him. The guy just was like, dude, I'm not fighting you. Like, get, get the hell out of here. And he just kept going and going and kind of slapping him. This big white dude wow. gets up. He's like, I think he was in, in his mid 40s. And he just like kind of puts the guy in chokehold, this little high school teenager. And he backs him up to the exit and then he just throws him out. And That's the whole awesome. audience cheered, and I was like, yeah. "Yeah, it was pretty awesome." I mean, I was I was expecting a fight to happen. I mean, notorious big wild pick. Sorry, I know it's a little rude, but what not? Whatever. Um, what else? The first time I saw Spider Man in the movie theater, the original, yeah, two thousand two. Yeah, Spider Man. Whole crowd was cheering every time we saw Spider Man really? swing. That's awesome, yeah. dude. I I, was like, Woo. I don't yeah. even think. It sucks. I didn't even see Spider-Man or X. I, I didn't see Spider-Man or X-Men in theaters. Yeah, I don't think mm -hmm. I, I might. I saw X-Men two in theaters. That was awesome. That was that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh -huh. And lastly, uh, I took my girlfriend at the time to go see Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh my goodness! Yeah, fail. Everybody in the theater. <laughs> we were all just like cracking jokes, laughing. Yeah. You know, all the acting was bad. At that point, it's okay to the talk. Action was bad. <laughs> talk crap. You know, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, Star Wars is gonna be. Uh, oh man, yeah, I'm like we're gonna be dreading it, opening but night. at the same time, I can't freaking wait. It's gonna be quite the atmosphere. Yeah and uh that's it guys all right well that's gonna wrap up our movie news show for this week i would like to thank my guests here or not guests but my partners here uh jake berlin where can they find you online man uh facebook twitter instagram at the jake berlin um twitter and facebook at apocaflix and apocaflix.wordpress.com and geo where can they find you online you guys can find me on twitter at georgia ramos 24 help me get 25 retweets <laughs> and at MovieTalkExpress.com every day. And I'm Jacob Bartley, your host. And you can find me on Twitter at Jake Ryan Bartley, on anywhere at Jacob Bartley, and on MovieTalkExpress.com and our YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you like what you hear and hit that like button if you're already subscribed. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Bye.